This is 2018 physics of her question. Um, and again, before you start watching the video, I would suggest you try the, to solve the questions. The links are um, in the description. So the disc shown above spins about the axis at its center. A student's experiments reveal that while the disc is spinning, friction between the axle and the disc exerts a constant torque on the disc and um, if you watch the lessons before that i posted earlier um, the torque is the force that causes an object um, to move in rotational motion at time t sub zero at time t sub zero the disc has the disc has an initial uh, counterclockwise and counterclockwise considered to be positive angular velocity the discs the disc later comes to rest at point uh, t equals to t1. On the grid at left below, sketch a graph that could represent the disc's angular velocity as a function of time um, t from t sub 0 to t equals to t sub 1. And on the grid on the right below, sketch the disk's angular acceleration as a function of time from t equals to t sub equals to zero to t equals to t one. So because our um, constant torque is present there, then you have constant acceleration because the torque is like a force is equal to so the force is equal to mass times acceleration, and the torque is equal to inertia times angular acceleration so the torque is linearly proportional with um, angular acceleration so for the first graph i have to sketch um, angular velocity as a function of time and we start with initial velocity of um, angular velocity uh, equals to omega sub zero at t sub zero Oh, t, t equals to zero so i have initial velocity angular velocity and at t equals one um here it's in the graph at the bottom you can see t equals one at the bottom i have to have angular velocity is equal to zero so i need to find the relationship between the velocity and the time so for the first part because you have um constant torque and you have constant acceleration you will be losing speed um, angular velocity until you get to zero and um, because it is linear relationship uh, between each second you're going to be losing the same so your angular velocity is equal to initial velocity plus acceleration times the time and in our case, we are losing the velocity. So every second we are losing the, um, our angular velocity. So um, between omega over time, there is a linear relationship in this case. So I have um, just the line, which goes all the way to zero. And the slope of this graph is um, negative and a constant. So I can say my acceleration is um, somewhere and I can, because they don't give me the numbers, it doesn't matter which number I choose, I can say this is my negative angular acceleration uh, because you have the axis. So here is your axis and that is your time. This is your angular acceleration um, measured in radians per second squared. And this is velocity in radians per second over time. So that gives me the answers for um, the first and second part on a, my acceleration stays constant and my velocity drops by each the same number each second so 
um, each second it will drop by the same number. For B part, the magnitude of the frictional torque exerted on the disc is T sub zero. Derive an equation for the rotational inertia of the discs uh, of the disc as the, in terms of T sub zero, omega sub zero, and time and physical constant as appropriate. So I can use um, my second Newton's law equation. So the sum of the forces is equal to ma. In this case, the sum of the forces is equal to, or the net um, torque is equal to, instead of the mass, we have inertia and acceleration. And your acceleration is equal to, um, so I have inertia, it is change of the angular velocity over the time. And your final angular velocity is equal to zero. And initial angular velocity is omega sub zero. And change of the time is t1. So I have i, final is zero, initial is, um, let's write it down, final is zero, and initial is um, omega sub zero, and the time change is t1. And you have, um, rotational inertia is constant. So instead of net, I could write sub zero because it's given. So your inertia is equal to um, rotational um, frictional torque times it takes to stop over negative omega sub zero and inertia is ability of an object to oppose um, the change of um, on the motion so your torque is also negative I cannot have inertia which is negative so my inertia is equal to because the torque is opposed in the motion so my inertia is equal to um, tau t1 divided by omega sub zero. So that would be my solution for um, for this part of the problem. So for C part, they say in another experiment, the disc again has an initial positive angular velocity omega sub zero at the point of t equals to zero. At time t, so at some time t, let me get a different color here. So at some time t, it is equal to, which is one half of the final t when it stops. The student starts dripping oil on the contact surface between the axle and the disc to reduce the friction. As time passes, more and more oil reaches that contact surface, reducing the friction even further. So the question is, on the grid below, on the left grid below, so um, our left side, it's like T over two, one half T1 and T1 uh, on the grid on both of them. So on the grid below, graph and um, Again, angular velocity. So again, we're going to graph angular velocity as a function of time. So it looks like, let me place my axis so they are more visible. So until, until it was time, so initially I had the graph that looked like this. But now, um, because the oil starts dripping at the point of t, one half t final, um, my graph is going to be the same until it is t final, or t, uh, one half of the t final. But then after that, it will start 
and it's not linear after that so i cannot say it's going to be just longer this way because they say um that more and more oil reaches the contact between um, the disc and the rod so that means the graph is not going to look like this the graph is going to look like something like that um, but they don't give me that much space so i have to change my graph into something that is going to look like this and eventually stop so for the second part you had um at first and i'm going to do the same acceleration to keep it constant so they see um the graders see that i understand that um acceleration is the same negative until half of the time but then after that acceleration changes and it's it's not smaller constant otherwise you would have a straight line just longer on the other side it also changes as they drip more and more oil so there's going to be more less and less acceleration uh, maybe approaching zero i don't want to get it to zero on my graph um, maybe approaching zero but not but not um, linear anymore not like constant anymore so that would be for the second part for c um, and then let's see what we have for d and then for d they say the student is trying to mathematically model the magnitude of theta um, of torque um, exerted by the axle on the disc when the oil is present at time t is greater than one half so the student is trying to um, model mathematical model of this part when um, the oil starts dropping and the student writes down the following two equations each of which indicates a positive constant c1 and c2 with appropriate units so they give you two of those equations mm. and which equation better mathematically models the experiment um, here we have to choose equation one or equation two and we also have to give our explanation and this explanation is going to be um, graded based on what kind of points we respond or cover when we do our explanation before I start answering my question, I'm going to go back to my um, dynamic and forces and see what I know from the forces because I know usually when students do their rotational motion because we don't spend a lot of time on rotational motion uh, and it's briefly covered in AP Physics, um, but we do spend a lot of time in dynamics. So I'm going to say um, if I have force is equal to MA, then force is equal to mass change of the velocity over the time so your force is inversely proportional to the time um, your torque is equal to inertia times angle acceleration torque is equal to inertia and change of the angular velocity over the time and again, your torque is inversely proportional to the time. So in these two equations, I see that um, in this case, your torque is proportional directly to um, the time. So your torque in this case is if I distribute it, I'm going to have C one t minus one half c one t one and in this case i have the torque is equal to c two um cannot break these ones apart but the time do you see that the time is is in the denominator 
they say that the time is a denominator. So the torque is inversely proportional to the time. So from um, my perspective, the answer would be the correct one would be more two than one. Another explanation of it is that your torque, um, the longer it takes, the longer it takes, so the longer the time is, the less torque is going to be. Um, the less force is going to be acting to slow it down because more and more oil is going to be added. And that concludes our um, work for 2000. 2018 AP Physics 1 exam question.